Hello, this is Jewel here. She's a Bedlington Terrier, so I've started grooming her already. So I'm just going to keep going here. So I've done, as you can see, this side of her head nearly. So we're onto this side. Up. So I've reverse tipped her neck on a 7F. Um, and I'm going to clip her ears now on a reverse 40 blade. The first time I did this, I nearly had a heart attack. I wouldn't do a reverse 40 now if it was on a pet. But she's a show dog. So she's well used to it. So you're sticking your thumb here, the bottom of the ear, because they have a tassels on the end of their ears, so it good puts it into a V shape. You need to clip a V shape into the bottom. So it goes like a diamond shape. And you're clipping it right up to the top where the ear meets the head. And then you're going to put the same on the inside. So you need to put it into a V on the inside too. So reverse clip of the ears gives them a really clean to crisp finish, you'll see on this side. So this on this side is what we're aiming for on the other side. Now this under her chin will be clipped away but I just like to leave a little goatee to hold whenever I'm doing the Bennington's heads because their, he their heads aren't easy to do anyway. Um, at the best of times, so it just lets give you a little handle to hold on to. So I'm going to clip her cheeks now. On a reverse 15. If it was in the shop, I'd probably do in the salon. I'd probably do a 10 with the grain if it was a pet dog. And so you're going everything from the corner of the ear to the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth. and down into a V in the throat. Oops. 
Again, I'm just leaving my little handle right here. To hold on to. And our neck has been clipped on a reverse 7F, but I'm just going to go back over it again and clip down our shoulder a bit. Here. And then I'm going to put those down the shoulder. And I don't know where the camera is, so I'm hoping you can see. I can't see the camera from here. Give it off there. And then I'm going to clip her ribs on a 5F. Bannington's are my favourite breed to groom because everything's so different. I'm a very messy worker, so excuse the table. So I clip the ribs. And you're leaving this up here because you need to, that's where you need to scissor in the rope. So the cheeks, the ears, the neck, the ribs, and the tail. I've done that tail on a reverse 10, up to two finger widths from the top, up here, like that. That's all the clipping that I would do in a Bennington, whether it's in the shop um, or any of them. I scissor the rest in after that. So that's all your clipper work done now. And then the rest is scissoring. So let's go, let's do this head. I found, I've always found the head the hardest to do. Um, it took me ages to realise what shape they were supposed to be. And then, so the way I would describe it is the head is like a tic-tac. So as soon as I saw the tic-tac shape, it made grooming their heads an awful lot easier, I find. So you're going straight up. The whole way across here. Don't turn here. Stick all that right in there. And this is the Bellington's favourite game. Just to twist their head, and twist their head, and twist their head. To make it nice and hard for you. So you're going straight up here from the front. So whenever you look at them from the front, you shouldn't see any eyes at all. They're, this hair is there because they're terriers whenever they're hunting for vermin. That's to protect their eyes. So I'll pull it all forward. Says around the nose. I have this side done already, so I'm just doing this side. Tidy up all this hair here. Tip, tip. And then anybody that's used to doing poodle top knots, I would split it down the middle. Some people comb it to the side, I find for Bedlington's because they're cold so fine, it's easy to split down the middle. And then as you can see, there's a straight line up that way. So we're going to do the same on this side. Straight up. And then when you comb it up, it's already, you can see it's already starting to go into shape. There, I'm hoping you can see. Hold 
Yeah, you can see. <laughs> Sorry about that. So. Comb it all up. Badlingtons, because their coats are so fine, you'll be combing forever to get all the little hairs out. I use these Yentro combs for this. Got them in Christie's. And because the teeth on them are so fine, it catches all their, their fine coat and lifts it really well. So. These are actually Christie's scissors I'm using today. They are the serious ones, they're Groom Pro's own ones. Um, I won them in Dublin the year before last year, and I love them. They're brilliant. Even for the Bellington's fine coats, they're very good. They need to trim this right tight into their lip, their top lip. So to get this in here, you need to lay your scissors flat on their cheek and take everything that's above them scissors off. You flip that in reverse. Well, that was a reverse 15. And then everything, when you lay your scissors down there, everything above it should be gone. Even when you comb all that down, lay your scissors down and anything above it. Take it away. That sets the, the width of your tic tac. Then now it's very easy. Whenever you're doing this, you need to look from the front because you can start to take the nose in too narrow. And if you take the nose in too narrow, then they look like they have a big bulb at the top of their head. So that's what I used to always do. I, used to take the, the, I was scared to take enough off here and then I used to take the nose in too narrow and the dog looked like it had this big bulb then at the top of its head but as you can see there that's getting nice and narrow there either side so what I'll do is I'll comb it all up the way like that and if you can see any more bits that you've missed in there there's a cartilage here in their ear. Their highest point of their head should be directly above that there. Just there. Now to get the back of the head. I comb it back this way. And then get your curved scissors. Just bring their head right down to their chin like that. And in like this. And scissor it up the way. And that then should blend the back of the neck in there from your 7F. Up oh, there. You can see the back of that there. And that gives you the line then for the top of your head. So that's what we're getting there now. We're building our shape well. The other mistake that I used to make with these Bedlingtons too was giving them a big Roman nose. So that there should be parallel with that. So I can still see some more hair here at the back of her ear I need to take off. I obviously missed when I was flipping. So that needs in short in there. And then there's your line there at the bottom of your top lip. Another line should be directly above it then. I wasn't able to finish the other side of the head properly because I couldn't take this line in. So then you can see here, there's your highest mark. Sorry, I'm standing in the way here so I'm, I'm not used to grooming in front of a camera. Pooch Perfect taught me a few lessons, so it did. But the cameraman moved around me there, so it was a bit easier. So, there we go. We have our shape pretty much in there, so we do. And the same on the other side. Now, don't, a lot of people here, it's very tempting. Start scissoring in here, just in front of the eye. But you're not supposed to do that. You shouldn't, when you're looking from the front of the dog, you shouldn't see the 
eyes at all. Should be completely parallel. When you're looking from the front, I think that's the front you can see. You can see that's parallel either side there. No eyes to be seen from the front. You can see the eyes in from the side. Blend that in there with a bit. There we go. I always leave their little shin bit on till the very end because if I see any extra bits in under the head that I need to trim off, like that. I have my little handle bar to the very end. I'll be trimming this head for the rest of my life, so I could. There we go. So. Yeah. We're going to... I'm not going to bother scissoring around their ear on video because anyone could do that, that's easy. Tip for doing that is if you get a baby wipe, wet it, rub it up the end of the ear like that, all the wet hair will stick out and then you can scissor in tight around the ear without cutting it, so it makes life a lot easier. There's two ways of doing the bottom of their ears, you can either do a beveled edge or a make it into a diamond, so a bare owner, she likes a beveled edge on her ears, which is a lot easier than the diamond, so I'm quite happy. Gonna check the time on my video. It's not, is it gonna tell me? No, it's not gonna tell me. Sorry, so I'm just gonna keep going. So on the feet, just like a terrier foot, trim it up, comb it all down, trim around your pads. Get all the hair out. So this is what I like to do. I like to do my feet. Put it down. So, the highest point on a Bellington. I imagine she had a will, like, we'll be right above that. There. So you can see that from her her last groom already. I have started her other side, she's not finished yet, but I'll show you. There's a before and after. So as you can see, if she had a willy, your highest point will be there. So let's get going. Whenever you're looking at these from behind, as you can see one side's done and one side not, it should be quite neat. And it should flow into your arch from behind as well as from the side. So what I usually do is, like a, like a poodle stop, top knot and like I did with the, the side of her head, comb all this to the side and get your straight scissors and scissor in. Take all that off. Oh, bad prep, bad prep. Then you can lift it again. So there's her highest point. You can see that's it without it even being scissors. And that's the lowest. So in here, I'm gonna go in with a, what have I got here? Usually a 30. On my trimmers, I would usually do this. It's easier. You can carve it out. She's got a lump here. So let's wash that. I have all that hair out there. So it is quite hard to 
blends into a reverse 7F. It takes a, it takes a bit of practice, so it does. But you can see already there the shape's going in. So what I'll do there is use my curved scissors and take that out because there's your lowest point there. So then it starts to rise up. That's too high now, obviously. We're going to take some off that. 